Hi, it's Tim from the Saskatoon Public Library today uh, to do a boredom buster for you. And also, I should mention that, uh, of course, we're doing this from Treaty 6 territory, also the traditional homeland of the Métis. Okay, so today's boredom buster, well, it's kind of simple. It's going to be all about hearing, about using these funny shaped things that are on both sides of our head, our ears, right? Now you see a picture behind me that uh, sort of lists all the five senses that we have, right? So there's uh, seeing, hearing, uh, smelling, tasting, tasting, sorry, and of course touching. Um, I should mention that uh, those are the five senses, those are the major senses that we use to perceive the world, to uh, uh, interpret the world that we uh, walk through every day. But there is actually way more senses. Uh, I think they're up to 28 or something. And they're mostly about combinations of those senses, the five senses, and how our brain uses that to, uh, again, perceive the world. Um, and two of the senses that we use together a lot are our eyes and our ears. I mean, you're doing it right now, right? You're watching my face as I speak to you, which your ears are picking up uh, via sound sound waves. And of course, your eyes are picking up light waves coming into your eyes. Are they called waves? They're sometimes waves, sometimes particles. Anyway, that's a whole other boredom buster. The physics of light. Oh, goodness, Jim. Talk about getting into the weeds. Anyway, those two senses we use a great deal to watch television, to pretty much go through our world. Uh, we're always listening, and uh, our, our, at least our mind is paying a great deal of attention to what we see and what we hear, and putting those two things together uh, to make a better sense of the world. Of course, there are people in the world who don't have one or other of those senses, or maybe not either of them, and they still manage to get through the world really really well. Um, and I'm thinking, of course, of blind people. And then there's deaf people. Blind means that you can't see. And uh, deaf means that you can't hear. And all the people I've met uh, that have those situations uh, are really competent. They're really great at getting through the world. But I have, and I suspect most of the people who are watching this, have eyesight and ears. And uh, yeah, our minds pay attention to those two senses a lot. Maybe particularly our eyes. So I thought today what might be interesting is to focus on these guys, as I said before. So how do you do that? Hmm. Well, it's pretty easy, actually. Get, block off your eyes, right? So, for this board and buster, you're going to need one of these, or something like it. So basically, this is just, just a blindfold, right? In my case, it's just a piece of sort of wrapped up cloth, and soft and nice, and I can put it over my eyes, and then I can just tie it on behind my head like this. There you go. And then you make sure that you can't see and stuff like that. But before you go out and get yourself a blindfold, <sighs> you got to have a few other things as well. What you need is a guide. Somebody to guide you so that you don't go walking into walls because I'm going to have you moving around a lot, right? Um, so before you get the blindfold, you need a partner, a guide. And what I would suggest is that maybe you get your mom, your dad, or uh, your guardian, or maybe an older sibling, um, an older uh, sister or brother, because, uh, well, you need somebody that's going to be, that you trust, right? And uh, somebody that's not going to get you into trouble because you're going to be walking around. You don't want to walk into a wall or trip over a toy or, a, a, you know, something on the floor or run into a piece of furniture or whatever. So you need a guide, you know, somebody that they'll put their hand on your shoulder as you're walking along. Uh, and we'll say, you know, don't stop, you're too close to that wall, or oh, you're about to trip over your feet, you know, etc., etc. Okay, so those two ingredients you absolutely need. 
you might want to prep your house a little bit as well. So before you put the blindfold on and stuff, you could go around and uh, start listening to noises in each room of your house. Is there any noise there that you can tell? Hmm, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Uh, usually the kitchen, uh, usually you can hear the refrigerators going, maybe the dishwasher's going. But if there's absolutely no noise, you can make a little noise in there. Like in the, uh, the kitchen, for example, uh, you could, uh, I don't know, put on your blender or something like that. And, uh, or you could have your partner while you stand in the middle of a room, uh, I don't know, push down the toaster, see what that sounds like. Um, maybe move some cutlery in a cutlery drawer, that sort of thing. And see if you can figure out what the sounds are. I think you'd be surprised at how well you can do that. But anyway, as you move through with your blindfold on, um, if you have some noises coming out of the other rooms, let's say a radio in one room and so on, um, or whatever it might be, or maybe your other siblings or whatever, making noises in another room and, and so on, you can do whatever you want. Um, you've got to make your way through your house and see if you can sort of tell where you are. Because here's the thing, uh, you probably spent quite a bit of time in your house, in all different parts of your house. Uh, so you actually have a mental map of your house that your brain, by the way, uses all the time, even though uh, you may have your, you know, even when you have your eyes open, you kind of know that, oh, over there, there's a, uh, there's a couch and, and so on. And when you start putting the sounds together, your brain, which is a very clever thing, will start to do the same thing. It's very cool. I would also suggest you go outside because outside is a huge environment for sound, right? There might be birds singing, uh, there might be a breeze going through the trees, uh, even just the sound of your feet on the grass or, the, or your back porch or whatever it is, um, changes the way you kind of perceive your world. Cool, eh? So let's talk a little bit about sound first, uh, as opposed to seeing. Uh, when you look at things, uh, you've got those two eyes, which means you have binocular vision, it means that you can tell how, kind of how far away things are, you know, like your hands, you know, which one's closer to your face, that sort of stuff. That's what binocular vision does for you. But we don't have eyes in the back of our head, so we effectively see oh, about to here and about to here. And then, you know, we, can, we have to rotate our head and that sort of bubble or dome that we can see uh, moves with it. But we don't have eyes in the back of our head, no sir. However, those ears, 360 degrees all the way around to the back and all the way around to the front, which is a cool thing, you know, uh, if you're walking uh, in the middle of the forest and uh, you're just looking ahead of yourself, but behind you, you hear and you stop. Maybe you chance a look behind you and you realize it's a bear and you run, which is not a good thing to do it's from a bear, by the way. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, you can sense the world. It's like having eyes in the back of your head because of your ears. Cool, eh? So when you're blindfolded, uh, your world is effectively 360 degrees, as opposed to when, even when you can hear and see, uh, you tend to, unless there's some loud noise behind you or something like that, uh, you tend to perceive the world that's in front of you, so to speak, and not so much what's behind you. But if all you can do is hear in that combo, um, the world gets kind of bigger, curiously enough. Now, I suggest you leave your blindfold on for quite a while, 15 minutes, if you can do it. And because what happens is, is that your mind starts listening more and more and more when it no longer has the visual uh, stimulus happening. And uh, so you'll be able to hear better, so to speak. Um, you'll notice more noises than you ever did before. It's a very cool thing. And then the cool thing is if you do it for quite a while is when you take off the blindfold, uh, you're suddenly confronted with this visual world again and uh, you kind of appreciate what your ears do for you. At least hopefully that's what happens. All right, so I think that's it. I hope you have a good time with this. Remember, this is what you need. 
You need the blindfold, right? You need to uh, get a partner that you trust, probably a parent, uh, someone to guide you through the house and through the backyard and so on, so you don't hurt yourself. That wouldn't be cool. And uh, maybe set up your house a little bit so there's a little noise here and there and so on. You could try it without the noise to begin with and see all the noises that maybe are fairly quiet that your mind just doesn't bother with most of the time until your eyes aren't, aren't there for you anymore. And maybe you can have a discussion about why is darkness so scary? Could it be that because it's dark and you can't see, you suddenly hear all kinds of sounds that you never heard before, like, like your furnace? Or the refrigerator is really loud. So, anyway, have fun with that. Thanks again. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.